Looking for the best PC build with the Ryzen 9 9900X? The Ryzen 9 9900X is one of the top high-end CPUs you can buy right now, and it's a monster in terms of performance. In games, it keeps up with the newer Intel Core Ultra 9 285K in raw performance and efficiency, and if you care about productivity, efficiency, and gaming performance, the 9900X is an excellent choice for a high-performance PC. With that in mind, today I'll be putting this high-end Zen 5 chip to good use. I'll present quite a high-end premium build, and a value-focused build that prioritizes a good price-to-performance ratio. Before we start, remember that you can check all PC parts and prices in the description. With that out of the way, let's crack on with the best value build. While the Ryzen 9 9900X is by no means an inexpensive CPU, it's a great starting point for a value-focused build. If you do a bit of video editing, coding, or 3D work alongside gaming, then it's a better choice than something like a 9800X3D, which mainly targets gaming. It also helps that the 9900X is cheaper than the 9800X3D. Of course, just because it's cheaper doesn't mean I'm going to skimp out on the rest of the components. To kick things off, I chose the ASRock X870 Pro RS as the motherboard. Since this board has an X870 chipset, it has features such as PCIe Gen 4, USB 4, and Wi-Fi 7. On top of those features, it has a sleek white PCB, gigantic silver-white heatsinks, and three M2 slots. One of those M2 slots supports PCIe Gen 5, and so does the first Vi16 slot for the graphics card. For power delivery, we have a 17-phase VRM configuration, protected by an enlarged heatsink armor. You also get some subtle RGB lighting under the bigger M2 shield at the bottom. Finally, it supports 256GB of DDR5 memory at up to 8000 megatransfers per second. Speaking of which, for memory, I went with the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB 32GB kit. This kit features DDR5 speeds of 6400 megatransfers per second with a 32 cast latency. It's fast, the RGB implementation is glorious, and the price isn't too bad for a high-end DDR5 kit. The 32GB kit capacity will be more than enough for games, and it won't limit productivity either, unless your workload is heavily demanding in terms of memory. Moving on to storage, since we're focusing on value here, it's hard to ignore the Western Digital Black SN850X. I chose this drive as the primary storage because it's one of the best PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. It has a reliable DRAM cache, strong sequential read and write speeds, and a competitive price. Considering it's cheaper than the Samsung 990 Pro while delivering similar levels of performance, it's a no-brainer purchase. The 9900X is highly power-efficient, but being a high-end chip, it can run hot at times. This is why I decided on the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 ARGB as the CPU cooler of choice. I went with this option for a few reasons. The silent operation, its killer aesthetic, and the excellent performance. This AIO features a 360mm radiator with three RGB-enabled 120mm fans. It also features a VRM fan on top of the CPU pump, which cools components like the voltage converters. Best of all, it's reasonably priced. As for the graphics card, if you care about high refresh rate 1440p gaming with a bit of ray tracing thrown into the mix, the RTX 4070 Super is the obvious choice. I chose this card over competitors like the AMD Radeon 7900 XT because of its lower power consumption, better ray tracing performance, and advanced features such as DLSS. In games, when paired with the 9900X, you can expect extremely high refresh rates in competitive games at 1440p. If you have a high refresh rate 1440p monitor, this is a match made in heaven. It can provide a stable 60fps experience with ray tracing at max settings, thanks to a little help from DLSS. For the specific variant, I chose the Gigabyte Windforce OC edition. This one has an all-black design, a full metal backplate, and three high-pressure fans. It looks great, performs well, and never gets too loud or hot at full load. Powering all these high-performance parts is the Corsair RM750X. 
This is a 750 watt, 80 plus gold fully modular power supply, so you're getting the best possible experience here. It's a power supply that never gets too loud, has more than enough wattage for all your components, and has excellent reliability. It's a bit better than the RM750E line, which tends to be a bit noisier. Finally, all these components sit inside the Corsair 4000D airflow case. It's a well-regarded case with a focus on airflow, as the name implies, and on ease of building. You get a front mesh panel for excellent airflow, ample space for components to breathe, and excellently organized cable management options. All in all, this is quite a high-performance build that doesn't sacrifice anything. It'll be more than enough for 90% of the users out there, and only the ones who want to experience 4K gaming with ray tracing will feel the need for more power. For everyone else, and with a cost of around $1,700, this is a machine that won't disappoint if you care about high refresh rate gaming and demanding productivity tasks. Before we continue to the best premium build, it would really help us continue making more videos if you support us by just hitting the like button and subscribe, or even with a comment so that I know if you like it or if there's something I can do to improve next time. I promise it costs nothing, just a few seconds. So now let's continue with the best premium PC build with the 9900X. With the Ryzen 9 9900X being an absolute beast of a CPU, it's only fitting that it works wonderfully in a premium build. The 12 cores, clocked at 5.6GHz, are plenty enough for productivity, and gaming performance is nothing to scoff at either. With a 120W TDP, the 9900X manages to stay cool under full load, allowing you to extract its full potential. Considering its excellent performance, it would not be right to cripple this Zen 5 CPU's performance with a cheap motherboard. As such, I went with the Gigabyte X870E Aorus Elite Wi-Fi. Being an X870E motherboard, it has more PCIe lanes than X870 boards, more USB 4 ports, and even a couple of extra SATA ports. It features a black PCB with enormous heatsinks on the VRMs, the chipset, and the M2 slots. Speaking of which, three of the four M2 slots support PCIe 5, while the last one supports PCIe 4. You also get a robust 20-phase power delivery configuration, meaning overclocking the 9900X will not be a problem. Finally, you get support for 256GB of DDR5 memory at up to 8200 megatransfers per second. For RAM, I decided to go with the Corsair Vengeance RGB 32GB kit. This particular kit is clocked at 6400 megatransfers per second, and it overclocks quite well. With a low cast latency of 32, the timings on this kit are tight, resulting in better performance. Finally, it has some tasteful RGB lighting, providing a soft glow inside the case. Storage-wise, I went with the best PCIe Gen 4 drive out there, the Samsung 990 Pro. I recommend the 2TB version as it's the best value and has 2GB of DDR4 DRAM cache. It's blazing fast, highly reliable, and often discounted at a lower price. To keep temperatures in check, I chose the Corsair IQ H150i Elite Capelix XT. This CPU cooler features a 360mm radiator, three 120mm AF120 RGB fans, and a pump that features plenty of RGB. The performance is excellent, and it's one of the quieter 360mm AIOs out there. On top of that, it's quite the looker, which is something that matters when you're spending this much on a PC. To maximize the performance of the 9900X, I went with the RTX 4080 Super for the graphics card. The 4080 Super is noticeably faster than the 4080 and the AMD Radeon 7900 XTX, while also being more power efficient than the Radeon card. At this price, it has no real competitor. The only card better than this is the RTX 4090, but unfortunately, that GPU is upwards of $2,200 these days. Instead, the 4080 Super is a much better purchase. It can play all the games you want at 4K, and if you want to enable ray tracing, DLSS, and frame generation, can help you get close to those 4090 numbers. 
More importantly, if your focus is on competitive titles, such as Counter-Strike 2, this thing is going to be a beast. You can reach frame rates as high as 400 FPS in Counter-Strike 2, so my advice is to pair it with a 360Hz monitor if you really care about competitive gaming. To power all these components, I chose the Corsair RM850X as the power supply. This is an 850 watt fully modular unit with an 80 plus gold certification, so you're all set in terms of reliability. It's one of the highest quality power supplies out there, as it uses high quality resistors and capacitors. Best of all, it has near quiet operation and enough wattage for future upgrades. All of these powerful components need a case with good airflow and sleek looks, and the NZXT H9 Elite certainly meets those requirements. Apart from the GPU, this is one of the most expensive parts in this build, but worth the cost. This chassis prioritizes aesthetics and airflow, and the dual-chamber design gives the power supply a home away from the rest of the components. In return, you get plenty of breathing room for the rest of the components, keeping temperatures low. The tempered glass panels on the front and side give you a stunning view of the components, and it can accommodate up to 10 fans in total. To conclude, this build with the Ryzen 9 9900X is an absolute powerhouse. The combination of top-tier components ensures smooth performance whether you're gaming, creating content, or multitasking. At around $2,900, it's a worthwhile investment for those who demand the best possible performance and aesthetics. Thanks for watching. I hope my suggestions have inspired you to build your own Ryzen 9 9900X PC. Remember, you can check the prices for each component mentioned in the description below. And if you're interested in more PC building suggestions and hardware reviews, be sure to check out more of my videos. Before you go, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to stay updated, and let me know your opinion and suggestions in the comments. See you in the next one.